Good morning and welcome to our service. Our text for today is from one of the most popular verses in the Bible and yet very misquoted and very t- much taken out of context. Um, today we were going to uh, hear from the Word of God. We're going to hear from Jeremiah 29, and already, as I mentioned, Jeremiah 29, you know, you know where we're going. Amen. Amen. So, um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We ask that your Spirit will speak to our hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, open our hearts, Lord, to your words, that as we come to it, we might find nourishment, we might find light, we might find food, we might find encouragement lord within your word in the name of the lord jesus christ come lord feed us we pray as we come to your word Uh, may the speaker be blessed and may the hearers be blessed in jesus name amen amen so we come to jeremiah 29 and jeremiah 29 is um a, a, a chapter written written to those in captivity, amen, those who find themselves in a place where, in this time, it was they were carried to captivity by Nebuchadnezzar, um, the, the, the king of Babylon. But, uh, but, 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 but the scripture is for anybody who finds themselves in a place where you're not quite sure how you got there. You're not quite sure this is God's best for you. You're feeling like there has to be, there has to be a better, better, better thing. There has to be better way. God can do better than this. Amen. You're feeling like this place is just a stopgap. Amen. And that's how the people of Israel would have felt in those times. Amen. And 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 and, and in Jeremiah. You see the, the the full picture is in Jeremiah 28. Um, the, the 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 prophet Hananiah comes to the people and gathers them round, uh, and he says to this people that actually don't unpack your boxes. Uh, the word, this captivity would only last two years. Amen. And actually, in two years' time, we're going back. God is taking us back. God is going to to open up doors and we're going to get back to normality. Amen. And Hanana tells them t- tells them this. Amen. And, and, and as Hanana leaves, he, he had put a yoke, a wooden yoke on, on the neck of uh, Jeremiah and broke it. And as Hanana leaves, the Lord speaks to Jeremiah and says, actually and now, because of what you've done, the, the yoke you, you broke was a wooden yoke. Now there's going to be an iron yoke. And, and I'm already, here's a warning for those in leadership. Amen. When God is doing something, don't downplay it and put your own interpretation on it. Don't, don't, don't deviate or, 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 or water down what God is doing. Amen. And so, God said, because of what Hananiah said, actually, before it was going to be easier, the, the, the land of captivity was going to be easier. Now it's going to be much harder. It's going to be iron. My good Lord. Amen. But then, you see, verse 1 says, this is the letter of Jeremiah. Amen. Verse 1 on chapter 29 says, this is the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the elders who are among the captives. Amen. Sent from Jerusalem to the elders. Amen. And so the elders could treat this letter with nonchalance. I mean, what do you do when, when, when you're in the process of waiting? I mean, some of us have been in a place where we, are, we, we, we just can't wait for, for, for Christmas to come. Amen. Some of us uh, find ourselves in a place where we just can't wait to get married. 
And sometimes you're in a place where you, you just can't wait to have a baby. Amen? For ourselves, when my son was going to be born, we, 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 we made sure that we said we were not, um, we were going to do up his room, amen? So we, we did up, painted the room uh, as, as, the, as the weeks got nearer and nearer. So, so that the place could be ventilated. And when the baby is born, the baby won't have to be breathing in paint. So we painted up the room and we decorated, decorated um, the room with all kinds of things. Um, I, I used uh, Manchester United memorabilia and plastered it everywhere and, I, I, and made sure the place look, looked good. You know, I, and my wife added finishing touches. Uh, female touches to it, and the place was looking. And f as soon as the room was ready, and the bag, the, the maternity bag was packed, we could not wait. We just couldn't wait for this baby to arrive. Amen. And sometimes she feels a twinge, and she says, "And I say, is this it? Is this it? And it might just be false alarm." Amen. And so sometimes we, we find ourselves in a place where we just can't wait. Uh, and you could fill in the statement. What would you, what, how, how would you complete this statement? I just can't wait until. Amen. I, I, it's very relevant. To, some of us can't wait just for the summer. We can't wait until this is all over. Amen. And that's the kind of place that the people of Israel were in. They were in a suspense. They were in a limbo. They were waiting. And this prophet Hananiah has said to them, this is going to be over soon. Two years. Don't unpack your bag. Leave your things in your bag. Leave from your suitcases. And, 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 and just... You know, walk around like you're dumb. You 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 are sleepwalking. Amen. Don't don't just, just don't get your mind round here. Don't 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 still stay. Just stay in a limbo, in suspense. Amen. And so the question is, when you find yourself in, in a place where you think this place isn't God's best for me, what do you do? When you find yourself in a limbo, in a suspense, you are in between jobs and you just can't wait for a new job. Amen? Uh, or, or you're in between movements. You, you want to, you, you know this house is, is only a stopping point. You just can't wait to get your own place. Amen? What do you do when your life is in a limbo and in a suspense? And I'll just encourage you that the, the thing that you need to do is, is to see things from God's perspective. Amen? See things the way God sees things. You might find yourself in a bad job. You find yourself in a bad marriage. Or even if you, maybe you made a mistake in choosing a university where you are at. And you feel, oh, I made a mistake. I can't wait to change universities. Amen? I'm, in that place of limbo, what do you do? Some people, it's bad marriage, amen? They, they, they feel, I, can't, I just can't wait for this marriage to end, amen? What do you do when, when you think that you, you, you are dealing with second best and that you deserve better than where you find yourself now? And most of us, if truth be told, that's where we find ourselves in this kind of lockdown, that we think we, we just can't wait for it to be over. Because it's going on and on and on and on and on and on that we almost feel like captives in our own houses. Amen. And I would encourage you to, to, that the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 4, and that's where it starts. Um, it says, um, this is what the Lord says. This, the Lord, the all-powerful, the almighty God of Israel says to all those people in captivity. I sent you away from Jerusalem as captives to Babylon. So build houses and settle in the land. Plant gardens and eat the food they grow. Amen. That God says that, listen, you may think that, that Nebuchadnezzar captured you. 
You may think that you lost the fight and, and so you've been carried into captivity. But God said, I was the one using this man, using the situation. I was behind the whole thing. I sent you, hallelujah, until you see yourself as a missionary of heaven. Sent by God into that situation, you will not enjoy the situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Until you see, God said, I sent you as captives into that land. Yes, everything may look foreign. Yes, people may behave uh, the way you are not used to. Amen. Yes, people may be, be careless, but I sent you. And so, as somebody who is sent, an emissary, somebody who is, who, who is a missionary and somebody who is representing heaven, what are you doing in your situation as, as, as somebody sent by heaven? The, the Bible says that God said the human beings are not responsible for where you are at and what is going on. He said, I, the Lord, your God, I'm responsible. Amen. And we see that. We see that confirmed by Joseph. Amen. In Genesis chapter 50. Come with me to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50 verses 19 to 21. Here's what the Bible says. But Joseph said to his brothers, Don't be afraid. Am I, I, am, am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. But God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't blame yourself and don't be afraid. I'll provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Hallelujah. That Joseph, with his brothers, when they recognized him, panicked and they thought, oh my goodness, he's going to get back at us because we were mean to him. We beat him up. We sold him into slavery. Amen. But the Bible says that Joseph saw things through the perspective of God, through the eyes of God, and saw himself as an emissary of heaven. I said to his brothers, listen, you may think that you sold me. Yes, they gave you money, amen, which you have used, but God was behind. Hallelujah. But it was God who was using the circumstance to save lives. The, the, Joseph said, listen, what is happening today, the saving of lives of Israelites would not happen if you hadn't done what you did. Amen. That God was behind. And if we don't take time until we see through the eyes of God, you'll have many grudges against many people because you have been wronged. As Joseph was wronged by his own brothers. But if you see through the eyes, you see these people as agents. Amen. Vehicles, mediums that God used to fulfill his purposes and his plans. Amen. And so, I am begging you. I am encouraging you. I suggest to you that wherever you find yourself, that it is not a surprise to heaven. Amen. Heaven is part of the deal. Amen. And God says, I am behind. I'm still at work. Amen. If you look for me, you'll find me in this place. Hallelujah. As, so, as long as you will give time to look in for me. He said, if you look for me, if you search for me, you will find me. Hallelujah. That, that, instead of wasting time and trying to, 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 to uh, delay and, and, and wrestle with why are we here and what is going on and, and, and how can this be God's best to look for God and say, God, I know you are here. Show yourself, Lord. Hallelujah. Show yourself, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And so the, and so the Lord tells the, the people of Israel in captivity, listen, flourish in this situation. Flourish, flourish. Unpack your bags. Build houses. Amen. Live normally. Try to live as normal as to, don't, don't, don't add to the captivity by holding yourself a captive as well. If the situation has held you captive, 
the worst thing you could do is to also imprison yourself. God said, leave, leave as normal as is possible. But grow gardens and, and water the gardens. Amen. And then he goes on to then make those words that we know. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans of a future. Amen. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Amen. Now, what kind of promise is that? Amen. What kind of promise is that? That in seven, for 70 years, you will suffer. Hello. What kind of plans are those? For 70 years, you'll be in slavery. You'll be in captivity. For 70 years. Is, it, is that a plan that I should rejoice? Is that a plan that is workable? Amen. So many times we come to the text and we come to the I know. But God is saying to the people in captivity, it's not in two years, 70 years. You have to endure this. Now you must stay with this and ask for strength and grace to stay with you for 70 years. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God says, after the 70 years, then there's a future. For us. There, 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 there's a strategy, a divine strategy behind this. Amen? And I just want to encourage you to, to, to log into the divine strategy of God. I don't know what is going on with you. I don't know where you are at. But I know God has a strategy. Amen. And at the earlier and the sooner we log into the strategy of heaven, the better it will be for all of us. Amen. The sooner we see through the eyes of God, the sooner we will enjoy what's going on. Amen. If, if it's ever enjoyable. Amen. The only place we can have peace is a place of saying, God, you are in here. God, you are in this. Show yourself, Lord. Reveal yourself, your plans and purposes for us. Amen. This is not the first lockdown that is, or, 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 or strange place that Israel has experienced. This is not the first captivity. Come with me. Amen. To Exodus Chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 says this. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once, amen, and select the animals for your families and slaughter them for the Passover. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on the both sides of your door frame. Not one of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of your door frame and will pass over your doorway and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Amen. That's a lockdown. Don't come out. Stay in. Stay in. Moses said, stay in. He said, tonight nobody should go out of their house. Save lives. Amen. That was Moses' instruction. He said, listen, if you want your children to leave, lock your doors. Don't go out. That's a curfew if there was ever any. Amen. That is not the first time. Listen, God can be in a curfew. God can be on, on an instruction to lock yourself in. Amen. For your own safety. That's God said to Moses. For, say to the people for their own safety. If you were stubborn that night and you refused to obey what Moses said and you went out, you were gone. You were dead, you were dead, and nobody would mourn you. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. So, so don't buy into some of these nonsense conspiracy theories that are God. As if they know the ways of God. Listen, God is sovereign. Amen. If, which means that He is in control of everything, and there's nothing that ever happens that God is not aware of. Amen. Amen. So God said to Moses, "Say to your people, for their own safety, because there's a destroyer out there. Shut your doors. Don't let your sons go out. Stay indoors. Hallelujah. That's that's my Bible. Amen." Let's, let's, let's get hold of God and, and, and read our Bibles and, get, and, and, and download the strategy of heaven for our time. The Bible says that the children of Issachar were more honorable than their brothers and sisters because they knew what Israel ought to do. That we as a people ought to know what heaven expects of us. Amen. That you're going out, you're not wearing a mask, and they say you're, 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 uh, they, are, they are being brave. You're not being brave, you're being stupid. Amen. And they say, oh, you, you're a coward. You're not being coward. If they disobeyed the instructions of Moses on the night of the Passover, you'd have been gone. You call on God, you could go out of your bad instruction was stay indoors. Don't go out. Hallelujah. That's the, the same God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How can he not be God in 21st century? Back in um, Baksha. Hallelujah. He's still God. And so the situation is not a strange one to heaven. Heaven is, I mean, the, Solomon said there's nothing new under this, this, this sun, under the sun. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you with the word of God. Amen. That this is familiar grounds. And I'm praying that God will give you grace for your days. Hallelujah. To manage, that God will give you strength. To manage wherever God has brought you. To know that heaven expects you to flourish in this situation. To know that heaven expects you, you know, to, 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 to enjoy, this, enjoy the journey. Hallelujah. Can you imagine if I took my son and I'm journeying with him and we decide this time we're going by road. And he puts his head down and says, oh, I, I don't know how I feel about this journey. I don't know how I feel. You miss, you miss the scenery. Amen. Enjoy the journey. May God give you grace. You and I, grace and strength. That we might enjoy the journeys of the days that we live in. And that we might enjoy the journey. He says, for I know the plan. I know I have the full strategy. I have the full plan. Don't panic. That heaven is still on course to deliver. And in chapter 30, Hallelujah. The Lord gives them promises of hope. He says, there are words that the Lord spoke. To. These are the words that the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. The Lord, the God of Israel said, Jeremiah, write the words that I have spoken to you. The days will come when I'll bring Israel and Judah back from captivity, says the Lord. I'll return them to the land I gave to their ancestors. And they will own it, says the Lord. And the Lord spoke messages of hope. And says, listen, the days are coming when you will dance again with your, with your children and your grandchildren. The days are coming when you will rejoice again and mingle again. And, and, and what is going on now? The people of Israel said, when the Lord turned our captivity, we were like them who dreamed. It was like we have just come out of a bad dream. And God says, the days will come. When you will look around and it will, today will, will be like a bad dream. May God give you the strength, hallelujah, to enjoy the journey. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Amen.